Welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and I'm at the Detroit Artist Market, also known as the Dam, which was founded all the way back in 1932 in the midst of the Great Depression. Now, during this period, a group of local art patrons realized there was a void of locations where artists could exhibit and sell their work. So, they created the Dam. Today, the Dam is committed to contemporary art and connecting artists, collectors, and communities. Now, let's get to our first artist. Detroiter Tyline Sawyer is a figurative artist whose symbolic paintings will definitely get you thinking. Here's more from Tyline. Art can inspire people, and a lot of people don't think about how strong that can be to inspire someone. One of the you know, like biggest compliments to me is um, if like a young black person sees my paintings and they talk about how they responded to it and they start talking about what they thought about the painting and some of the things they're saying are some of the things that I was thinking of, like that moves me to no end. I really just fell in love with the figure, like the human body, the form, and it, it's really challenging. I'm a people person, I love, I love faces, I love people, I love looking at bodies, I love drawing them, interpreting them. In terms of the social justice aspect of it, or really like focusing on um, race and identity, I would just say sort of like in graduate school, learning a lot about Western art, I saw no images of people who look like me in there. And I was learning how to paint, but no one ever told me how to paint myself, how to paint my mother or anyone like that. And I remember asking a teacher of mine once like, hey, are we gonna have any black models? And he told me a very sad truth and it was a truth. He was like, unfortunately for this particular class, we're focusing on this small niche in Western art and it just doesn't involve people of color. And that was a really hard thing to hear, but it's, it was the truth. It, I don't, you know, it wasn't coming from a malicious place. I actually think it came from a place of love. And I think literally in that moment is when I decided, you know, like that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna focus on people of color. So I used that moment to fuel my content, but I also used the experience to fuel my abilities to produce that content. I just curated my first show which opened up at the Red Bull House of Art, um, and it was an all drawing show. It wasn't a specific theme about dealing with um, race or anything like that. Um, all the artists in the show had their own particular themes. But whenever I'm invited to a show, I try to send multiple pieces there so that people who attend the show, they can get a snapshot into my particular practice or the way that I think about the world or my art or politics in that respect. People say a lot of interesting things about my work that is completely wrong, but I don't ever, I don't want to call out anybody. I just look at it and like, oh, I can see how you might think that's what this painting was about or this drawing, um, but that's not it. And as long as it's not a negative thing, I guess that's fine. I would just say more often than not, people are very optimistic and hopeful, and they see a lot of very positive, inspirational, happy things in my work, which was not necessarily my intent. I tend to go closer to the dark side <laughs> more often than not. Black Masquerade is essentially like people with these ascetic practices where they're using uniforms of like white shirts, black pants, male and females, like very dressed up, trying to resemble um, civil rights activists from the 60s and the 50s. And they're t using paper cut out masks to obscure their identity and adopt the identity of somewhat like a past archetype. So some of the main ones I've been working on uh, recently, the past archetypes have been Nina Simone, uh, Martin Luther King, and James Baldwin, and those were the three that really resonated with me initially. Um, James Baldwin because, you know, like I've read a lot of his books and I really, really dig his philosophy on education and how um, being an intellect, he was just as fierce, I think, as Martin Luther King or an activist who took it to the streets. But then Martin Luther King himself, just I'm sure all of us as Americans can understand what he means to the, you know, means to us in the grand scheme of American history and, you know, the fight for civil rights. Um, Nina Simone doing the same thing just through her artistry, some needing to negotiate her own demons and at the same time tackle these demons that were in the world. And the, the actual series is a direct response to the Black Lives Matter movement. And so this series sort of creates an, an alternative black power movement, if you could say, like all these people adopting these images and I don't know, it's like cult mentality. Each particular work has essentially like people of color, black people putting on a masquerade. And sometimes that can be a positive thing, sometimes it can be a negative thing all at the same time. 
Battle of Detroit happened at a time when I just had a lot going on in my life um, emotionally. And then the city was going through a lot at the same time as well. I came up with this idea of juxtaposing what if I mix Detroit with World War II Nazi occupied Germany in some weird crazy sci-fi world, but make none of that overt. And essentially the series kind of evolved into figures who are protecting themselves from um, toxic environments. And that's sort of what the mask kind of became a metaphor for. My work deals with some very serious issues and the things that I'm thinking about aren't always happiness or joy or this unity and things like that. I'm trying to get people to think about themselves in the world and think about the importance of being an individual, the importance of looking at your idols and seeing what was it that they did that really inspired you. And also at the same time, looking at your idols and seeing that they were not infallible. Like they, you know, like nobody was perfect. Nina Simone had her demons, Martin Luther King had his demons, um, James Baldwin had his demons, just about any activist you can think of. But that does not negate the great work that they did. But I find sometimes when people participate in idol worship, they don't think about that. My process of creating art definitely, I would say, involves a lot of thinking and conceiving of the image itself. Because I do figurative art and I would say like illusionistic sort of representation, um, it's labor intensive, so it takes a long time to do. But because something takes a long time, it takes a lot of planning. Once I decide what that image is gonna be, particularly for the series that I'm working on now, I do elaborate types of photo shoots to set up the composition. Once I come up with an image that I really, really like, it's time to paint. Oh, I love color. If you look at my palette, it's organized in this very idiosyncratic way, but it's set up in a way so that they, it can give like a lot of punch or intensity to the chroma. Um, even though this current series, I've intentionally muted some of the colors so that the series can take on more of an ominous type of feel, but it still has punch to it. That's something I'm very proud of. Like, I like that when you walk into a gallery and like the color punches you in the face. I'm looking at myself, I'm looking at my environment, my particular experiences. Um, I'm looking at just the world that we're living in right now. We can see like all the racial tensions which are springing up via incidents with the police, via um, presidential candidates, via just social activists, period. And so this is my way to negotiate my feelings about all this that's going on in the world. You can learn more about Tyline Sawyer and every other artist featured here today on DetroitReforms.org.